Hey, how's it going? This is Joe and Tell. Last time when I did the Klipsch RP600M review, I wasn't able to do the frequency response charts and kind of go over those. And usually I like to do that. And the video was just kind of getting long. So I did it on a separate video. This is that video. So let's take a quick look. This is the RP600M uh, in room response. So keep that in mind. This is not an anechoic response. So this is to be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, this is just how it was performing in my room, in perfect room. And so let's take a quick look at the bass. So this was calibrated to 85 decibels. And so let's take, at the, take a look at the minus 3 decibel point. So that would be at 82 decibels. And I was getting an in-room response of 38.8 hertz. That's pretty good. So that's at minus 3 decibels. Let's take a look real quick at minus 6 decibels in-room. And I was getting an in-room response. So let me get here to 79, approximately, about 31.9 hertz. So that's hitting some pretty good lows, which is what I was saying. Now, taking a look here, the base region is pretty flat, the lower mids. And then it starts to get a little bit, you know, a little bit peaky here in my room in the low, uh, low mids to the mids. Um... And then, of course, there's this dip. Now, this section here, right, that might just be my room. Let me take a look at some of the other ones. Uh, it could be the speaker. Just taking a look at some other measurements. You can see that this part varies depending on some of my measurements. But this dip is very persistent, right? I always, almost always see that dip. And uh, I talked to one of the engineers over there at Klipsch, and he, in fact, said, yeah, we, ha we do see that dip in our measurements as well. And it has to do with, of course, they were aiming for a certain price point, and so they had to make some sacrifices with regards to the, uh, you know, the components and the crossover. But in my testing, I wasn't able to de detect that, especially if I had these, uh, like I was saying, if I had them on a tall enough stand so that the center point between the tweeter and the woofer was right at my ear. So this is what kind of response I was getting in room uh, with a taller stand. And I was about maybe eight feet away from the speaker. And as you can tell, there's less of a dip here. So it was less of an issue. I was saying that in my testing, I really couldn't hear it. And especially when I had this uh, set up properly, uh, that was very hard to hear. So imagine that's like, you know, very within a plus or minus three decibel range, let's just say. All right. And what I really liked about this, so after the upper mids, in the presence region, and in, in, the, in the upper treble, it was very flat and pretty extended in my room compared to some of the other speakers. Now, it shows that it drops off here. That could be my microphone, could be, could be uh, my room also. But this does extend further than some of the other speakers that I've tested, specifically you know, the UB5s, which are known to really drop off here. But yeah, that's the frequency response of these RP600Ms in my room. And let's take a look at the speaker leaderboard and see where they place. So here we are on the speaker leaderboard, and I have the Klipsch RP600Ms. Let's see where they place. So as far as best bookshelf, so bookshelf, it's supposed to be good on a bookshelf, right? And this includes powered speakers. I'm going to have to go ahead and put the RP600Ms. This might surprise some of you, but right here, below the ELAC debut reference, above the SVS Ultra Bookshelf, and above the ELAC UB5s. And the reason I say that for Bookshelf is just because they're very versatile. You can use these for home theater, and, um, yeah, the reason I put it below the debut reference is just because the fit and finish, right, is better on the debut reference. I think they look better. Uh, I like the front port, makes it more versatile. And regarding the frequency response, very similar response to the Klipsch RP600Ms, except for the fact that they, the, the treble response is a little bit less bright, but the bass response is about the same, and it doesn't have that dip that I just showed you guys. So that's where they land as far as best, best bookshelf. Now, let's see. Best for desktop. These are way, 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 way too big for desktop. So 
you know, sound quality wise, yeah, they're they're okay. But it's just the size of those things are way too huge. So not to knock clips, I don't think they ever intended it to be for a desktop. But I'm gonna have to put these down pretty low, like some of the other speakers that I really like. They're gonna have to go down here. Let's see here, man. So even these two thousand uh, dollar Elac Navises are down here pretty low. I'm gonna have to put them even below. Hmm. Just for pure size, they're gonna have to be pretty low. Right here. Right here. Okay, so not meant to be for the desktop. Let's just say that. So here's another one. Um, another tricky one is when these first came out, I think they were around 500 bucks. Right now, the price is up. So I can't put them here in the $500 price range. Otherwise, that's probably where they would be at. You know, uh, I would say that if you were using it just for music, strictly music, and you had a room that was very reflective, then you may opt for the UB5. So you might you might have it set up this way, right? Uh, if you're going to use it for home theater, I'd probably put it this way just because the RP600Ms are brighter. And when you're using Odyssey, it can tame those highs very easily. Whereas the UB5s, they're less bright, and Odyssey will try to boost that. And that will really kind of mess with the sound in a way that I don't think is the best. So I prefer the UB5s in pure direct mode without any Odyssey enhancement. Because the RP600Ms are not $500, they're a little bit higher right now, check the price on Amazon C because they also offer specials. So, But for right now, if they're $500, this is where I'd put them. Right now, as they stand, they are over $500, and I would put them, again, right here below the debut reference. So last but not least... Let's see where they place overall. All right, so best overall sound regardless of price. Um, I don't like them better than the Denton 85th Anniversary or the Elac Navis or the the debut reference I still think would, would edge these out, but they will beat the SVS Ultra Bookshelf, which are also very, very, very good for home theater excellent it's just that i felt like the bass response on the rp 600 m's are a little bit more impressive than the ultra bookshelf once again with the ultra bookshelf if you're going to use it with the svs sub or any sub i think they're going to do excellent in the home theater environment the elac ub5s like i was saying i think if you prefer a more laid back sound and you let's say you have a bright room and you don't want something bright the rp 600 m's might seem a little too bright for you right but for me, they just sounded just right. They were very detailed. And I would put them slightly above the UB5s. Surprising, since I'm a ELAC fan, you guys know that this is the first Klipsch speaker I've ever reviewed. But there they go. That's where they place on the speaker leaderboard. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And once again, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for supporting me and allowing me to do what I love to do here on YouTube. Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.